Hello and welcome to another episode of Bite Size Science where you become an animal expert. Today we're going to learn about interdependence. What's interdependence? This is how living things depend upon each other for their basic needs. For example, you need oxygen, right? And you depend upon plants to provide your oxygen. Plants need carbon dioxide and they depend upon us and animals for their carbon dioxide. We need plants, plants need us and animals. We are interdependent. Can you think of another example of interdependence? Uh, uh, uh. What about flowers and bees? Bees visit flowers to get pollen and nectar that they need for food. In the process, they deliver pollen for the plants so the plants can make their seeds. Right, those flowers depend on bees and bees depend on flowers. They are interdependent. Now, we often think about living things helping each other in these ways, but that's not quite right. Are you thinking every time you exhale, there you go, plant have some carbon dioxide? Of course not. Are bees thinking about helping the flowers by spreading the pollen around? No, they're just looking for food. But you are in fact providing carbon dioxide every time you exhale, and bees are in fact delivering pollen as they go from flower to flower. Now sometimes living things make a full-time partnership. They basically spend all of their time together, and this is called symbiosis. One of the most Famous examples of symbiosis is the relationship between a clownfish and an anemone. Anemones are related to jellyfish. They've got stingers, but the clownfish has a special slime that allows it to swim right through those tentacles without getting stung. Now that gives the clownfish a great hiding place. If a big fish comes, the clownfish can nestle down in those tentacles, and if that big fish attacks, ouch, it gets stung by the anemone. The anemone also gets a benefit from this relationship. There's a fish called a butterfly fish that can actually eat anemones. <laughs> I'm gonna chow down on an anemone. But the clownfish acts like an anemone ninja. When a butterfly fish comes along, the clownfish chases it off. Don't you be messing with my anemone! hi -ya! This kind of symbiosis, where two different organisms depend upon each other, is a great example of interdependence. And you know what? It reminds me of a song. of the ocean I am a sea anemone My many arms are waving to and fro in the sea Now you better not try to touch me Even though I'm pretty like a flower Those tentacles will sting you Make you say A chihuahua! Man, that guy stung me! But there's one fish That I let swim right through Symbiosis Yeah, we live together Symbiosis And we both do better Symbiosis Because we help each other Symbiosis Symbiosis Now the butterfly fish Are an enemy, enemy number one But the clownfish is a friend of me And they're gonna send them off on the run Yeah, you better get out of here, butterfly fish so I let him hang out with me He doesn't have anything to worry about Cause if the bigger fish try to catch him I'll just sting them on the snout Yeah, take that! I give him a safe hiding place And he chases all my enemies away We keep each other safe We're living in symbiosis We live together
Than an anemone like me But there's a lesson I can teach you That we need so desperately You're living here with Mother Earth Like the clownfish lives with me Respect her and protect her She gives you everything you need And if we each can do our own small part We can share this world With all beneath the stars With all beneath the stars, with all beneath the stars We'll be living in symbiosis We can live together, symbiosis And we can all do better, symbiosis If we help each other, symbiosis Symbiosis, living in symbiosis You can find an even more important example of symbiosis in coral reefs. A coral reef may look like a bunch of rocks, but it's actually made from the stacked up shells of these little organisms called coral polyps, which are kind of like tiny sea anemones with shells. Many corals live in symbiosis with algae that are inside their bodies. The algae are like plants, they make food, and the coral polyp takes some of that food to support itself. That's awesome for the coral. The coral provides nutrients and protection for the algae. That's awesome for the algae. Now the whole coral reef ecosystem is made possible by this symbiotic relationship and tons of creatures depend on coral reefs for habitat like fish and lobsters and sea stars and squids and seahorses and sea turtles and on and on. They're even more diverse than tropical rainforests. Sometimes animals that seem like enemies are actually interdependent. For an individual fish, a shark is its enemy. But what happens when you remove the sharks from a coral reef? The whole ecosystem suffers and begins to decline. So if you step back and look at the bigger picture, the fish actually needs those sharks. They are interdependent. A lot of people are afraid of sharks, but an ocean without sharks is even scarier. Now you depend on the coral reefs too, as well as wetlands and forests and lots of other natural places. They give you much of what you need to survive. The oxygen, the food, the clean water. And I hope that those animals and plants out there can depend upon you to be a good partner too. Keep nature in mind as you go about your day and live your life. We make choices that can help the natural world or harm it. Think about the foods that you eat, the energy that you use, the things that you buy and the activities that you do and try to be as good a partner to the earth as a clownfish is to its anemone buddy. It is time to send you out one more time with a little Animals Rock. Well, animals rock and animals roll. Some animals climb up on your head and they lose control. Some animals are hip, some animals hop, hoppity hop. With animals they plop into the water with a belly flop. Because animals rock. See you later.